we've looked at a couple of gadgets that help us monitor the feed from our cameras a lot easier, but let's be honest, they might be a little bit overkill for some of us. So today I've got something here that's small, sends the feed from any HDMI enabled camera, such as the Fujifilm that I'm using right now, to your smartphone or your computer that I've got down there. It can potentially, I've lost track, <laughs> it can potentially control your camera. It has its own battery, which may charge your device to, and possibly lets you use your camera as a webcam. Sounds like a lot for hundred pounds, right? So is it worth it? Let's take a look at this Bembox dual band wireless video transmitter. Let's take a look at what we get inside the box then. Instruction manual in English and Chinese. Included in the box are these USB cables to connect your camera, including what we have here, a remote release for the Panasonic if you've got a socket. Alas, my Panasonic GX80 doesn't, so I can't take advantage of, in fact, any of these cables. And the same with my Fujifilm gear. These are specifically for controlling start, stop, aperture control, etc. We'll talk about that in a bit. You've got a mini USB, you've got a Type C there, the Panasonic one we mentioned, micro USB there, and a Sony specific cable there. Take a look at the unit itself close up. On this side we've got HDMI port, QR code. On the flip side the USB port itself. There's a Type-C port down here. It's actually a very nice solid metal construction. 120 grams so relatively small. Let's just call it mini. Of course the USB is 3.0 this has dual frequency Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, a 100 meter range. I think that's gonna be more line of sight than anything. You've got a quarter inch screw thread there and a cold shoe mount there. That bit is understandably a bit more plasticky. You've got an on off button here. So we give it one tap and then hold it down till everything's lit up. Let's go back to using it and talking about how I feel about this little thing. At about 100 pounds, 107 pounds, is it worth it? Some of us use cameras with less than ideal apps, and those even that have decent apps for their system, those apps don't really work like a field monitor would. And so the inclusion of functions such as LUTs, mono, even screen record are very handy, and I find that they work well. Now I can't comment much on the camera controllers, my Fujifilm gear and my Panasonic GX80 don't allow for that, but you would be able to control recording stills, movie, aperture shutter, ISO with a nice simple, yeah, leave it at that, nice simple interface. It does the job, or at least it would <laughs> if I had a relevant brand. What I can do is tell you that playback with the app is very good two. Now let's take a quick look at the features. I've got it running here as you'll see on the screen. If I, It's very simple. You can start and stop the feed. You can screen record. You can take a snapshot but also, I don't know if it'll be very clear but you can see now here, <laughs> at least on the screen, you can get your waveforms up. If I press here I would get focus peaking. I can just about see it on my nose there. I am at f1.4 and if I press here I can switch to mono. I've also got grids there so you can see that and LUTs here if I had them loaded in. Nice and simple. You can switch between a 1080p and a 720. Let me show you the menu up here. It's not that deep to be honest and some of it is not in English, but as you can see, there's a firmware there which suggests that all this could well be hooked up even better in the future. Importantly, latency is very minimal. Of course, this isn't marketed as a high-end pro bit of gear, and there are other brands out there with similar features aimed at a higher price point, but this little device 
look at the size of it basically you can throw it in your camera bag your pocket and you're there but of course there are bigger options there if you need to go to a higher budget for some reason but the latency pretty decent <laughs> The app on the Mac allows for a nice full screen experience too, as it effectively simulates a number of smartphone operating systems to achieve the Mac version. So you can select which suits you best. Now I couldn't play with this properly because for some reason, my MacBook Air and my Mac Pro won't recognize the Wi-Fi network while my Android phone can see it no problem at all. I guess that's something to do with the Mac system. Let us know if you've any experience on that front. Anyway, if and when I can get my MacBook or Mac Pro to see the Wi-Fi connection, I'll be able to put that feed into OBS and use that feed as a webcam solution to my Android device. As you can see, works perfectly fine for what I need. In this case, to monitor the feed, framing and so on. It was super easy to install via the official website, fairly minimal website in production by the look of it. The Wi-Fi connection was visible immediately, connected quickly and worked pretty smoothly. When it comes to my most used cameras, the Fujifilm gear like this T4 and the T3 that I did the latency tests on, this beats the Fujifilm app hands down as the display and monitor options are very handy. Now if I could control the camera too, then it would be no contest at all. Other brands like Sony can be controlled so that's a big bonus if your camera supports it. I know there are one or two videos online showing that maybe. Now there are companies like Axoon, Hollyland that we've took a look at, and Zion Tech. They're out there making image transmission systems, but I'm happy to see something at this end of the budget. Something that gets the job done nice and simple, and so far seems to be a very worthy little gadget. Of course, you're going to get less range and whatnot, but it's still extremely usable. Now we said wireless video for all in the title and that's not clickbait if it even worked <laughs> at all. This device evidently works with a number of digital devices. It's priced very sensibly, all things considered. Now Inky Tech seemed to be a brand new company. So let's see what's next and if they can put out more well-priced gadgets that make life easier for us creatives. What do you reckon? Subscribe so we can feature more cool gear. And a big thanks to everybody that's already subscribed. I'll see you in the comments below. Stay safe.